is up guys joel here from the home recording network giving you guys your fix on the latest home recording techniques i recently had a good buddy of mine up here from west virginia josh Folmsby, and had him record a song he was up here playing an event and we got him in the studio a little bit here's a little clip from the session flashback to a few years ago everything was different everything was gold didn't have to worry about the money to get my fix and now she's searching all the time she's just trying to ease her mind she got them scars up and down her skin yeah sometimes you gotta take a long way home yeah but don't be scared cause you're not Yeah, so Josh did not have his band with him, uh, so he just recorded kind of an acoustic song and layered some electric guitar over it. And I really don't have much out there on singer-songwriter stuff when it's just kind of some guitars and vocals, so I figured I should deconstruct this mix a little bit. So my next few videos will probably be about certain elements of this mix, uh, but today we're going to talk about a little bit of acoustic guitar and what should be done in the processing stage okay so we're in the mix and right here i got acoustic guitar left right i have the acoustic bus which both these top guitars are going to and then below the bus is the only effect send we have which is just some reverb now first before we get into actually showing you guys the processing for this i just want to talk about how i track acoustic guitars so I used to use stereo techniques, you know, two mics on the acoustic, uh, and it just never worked out. Uh, this is a mono instrument, so I started just using one mic on acoustic guitars because it's honestly how you get the best sound. It's a mono instrument. It should be recorded in mono. But what I like to do is double track them and then pan them to the left and right. So I'm just going to open up the mixer and... Over here, we can see they're not exactly hard right and hard left, but they're pretty close. Uh, I started with them panned hard right and hard left and just decided to bring them in a touch. So we have the output of these tracks going to bus one, which bus one is right here, which is just the acoustic bus. So we only have plugins on this acoustic bus, not on the acoustic tracks themselves. So I'm just going to mute the acoustic reverb because we don't want to talk about any reverb yet. And let's get into how we process these guitars. Okay, so we're going to bypass all the plugins on here, and let's listen to what we started with. Okay, so the first thing you notice here is that these guitars sound pretty good already. And that is extremely important when working with acoustic guitar because it's not an instrument that you can heavily affect and make sound good if you don't have a decent starting signal. The key here is to not get the microphone so close to the sound hole. We want to kind of stay away from that to avoid any low-end buildup from that sound hole. So what I usually do is I place a condenser, a large diaphragm or a small diaphragm pointing right at the 12th fret. And I usually place it anywhere from six inches to a foot away. I think this was more along the lines of six inches away. So pretty close to the guitar. Now this guitar sounds pretty nice, but there's some things we can fix. There's always going to be some harshness or some resonance that we can fix. And there's always a little bit of mud or low-end buildup that I like to tame down or take out. Not much in this case, but there is some work that can be done. Now, the first plugin that I'm using here is Soothe, which is not a plugin everyone's going to have, uh, but I highly recommend getting it if you can afford it. This thing works well on 
acoustic, vocals, drums. It's just a tamer of harshness. It, it takes out those unwanted frequencies. Now this is just the default setting here. And this is pretty much focused around that 4K area, which can be a problem for a lot of instruments, cymbals, vocals, and guitar, really. So we just have our default setting here. And what this is doing is taking out some of those nasty sounding frequencies. This plugin's real good at locating those nasty sounds and taking them out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this and then I'm gonna turn on this Delta switch here, which shows you everything that we are taming down. Now that is all garbage that we don't want in the mix. This thing is becoming one of my favorite plugins because you can throw it on a ton of tracks and it's just going to help you take out some of those unwanted frequencies that the microphone's picking up. Like I said here, we just use basically the default setting and I dialed back the depth a tad bit so that we weren't taking out so much of the signal. We were just taking out a little bit to make this guitar shine a little brighter. Now this isn't something you absolutely need. I'm gonna show you bypass versus on, and it's very subtle. So like I said, this isn't something that you have to do with acoustic guitar, but here's the difference. Like I said, very subtle, but taking out some of those nasty sounds. Next, we went to just Pro-Q2, and all we're doing is a roll-off to about 35 hertz. Now, normally, this would be a lot higher when an acoustic guitar is playing with a full band, like drums and bass and all that. I'll usually take this up to about 100 hertz, or even maybe a little bit more. But since this is basically the the basis of the song this acoustic guitar i wanted to leave all that low end in there this song needs some thickness so the low end of this acoustic guitar is basically the thickness of this song so i really didn't roll a ton off here next i wanted to deal with the build up in the low end and the muddiness of this instrument i mean when you're tracking acoustic guitar you're going to get a lot of that build up anywhere from 80 to 300 hertz. So for this, we pulled up a multiband compressor and I made a band just between about 60 hertz and 300. So for the ratio here, we have it at four to one. We have sort of a quicker attack because we wanted to catch these notes that are going over the threshold. And then we have sort of a medium fast release. Then we just dialed back the threshold a bit till we're getting some gain reduction. So I'm going to bypass this and bring it in so you can hear how the muddiness and this low end buildup just kind of goes away. It sort of thins out this guitar. that makes the guitar a whole lot more clear and relieves this muddiness that we're getting from the low end. I should add that I did add in just half a dB of makeup gain to this region. Next, we go to my favorite EQ, the SSL channel. And this is just about making this acoustic a bit more exciting. It already sounds great, but there's still more we can do. So to add some air, we have a 12K shelf boost by a little bit over 3 dB. We also boosted at about 2K by maybe a dB. And this is just about adding some bite to it. And then we also boosted at 300 Hertz and way below at 50 Hertz. This is where I would normally boost a kick drum or something like that. But since there's no kick in this song or low end, I felt like we could add a little bit of thickness to the low end by by boosting just a tad bit here. Okay, so we'll bypass this and 
Let's see what the difference is. It's going to be pretty subtle. And you can really tell the difference in the high end there. And this was just mixing with the vocal. So when you have the vocal in, you really get a feel for how much high end and low end you need in this acoustic guitar. So we haven't talked about compression at all. And that's because acoustic guitar is not something that I even always compress. Uh, once you start over compressing acoustic guitar, it can really start to sound awful. So I like to use as little as possible, and we do have the CLA-3A on here, but we're not doing much compression here. So the CLA-3A is great on guitar, and it's super simple. All you have is a gain knob and a peak reduction knob, and I think we're just getting a couple dBs of gain reduction here, just taming down the peaks when he gets super loud. So since we're not using a ton of compression, we can still add something to knock down those peaks even more without making this acoustic sound overly compressed. So what I did was just take a limiter, put it at the end of the chain, and brought down this threshold and outlet ceiling till we start getting a little bit of peak reduction on the loudest note. So here we go. Yeah, and we're just getting mostly just a dB or two. Uh, it's reacting a bit more to some of the louder notes, but we don't want this thing dropping super low. We just want it taking down the very loudest notes at certain times in the song. So now I'll just show you the difference. Like I said, these were all subtle changes, but added up, they really make a huge difference. So I'm going to bypass all the plugins, play the guitar, and then bring them in. And you can hear how much excitement and high end is added which obviously is going to sound better for the listener. All right, so now we have a great acoustic sound so we can talk about the reverb bus that we added. And again, this is very subtle too. You don't wanna to add too much reverb to an acoustic track because that will just muddy it up. So all we did was add a preset from the Verb Suite Classic. You can use really any reverb you want. You just gotta try some out to see which one matches the guitar tone you're working with. And this is just the guitar thickener preset. And what we did was we put Pro Q2 on after it and we rolled off the high end to about 7K and then took out some around the 100 hertz area. And again, this was the, the muddiness that we tamed down in the guitar track. And we also did that with the reverb track. So rolling off the high end is always something I like to do on on most of my reverbs because it makes the reverb sound darker, which, which is gonna make it seem further away. So here I'm just gonna bypass the EQ and show you what this does to the reverb. Yeah, and that sounds super nice and it doesn't have uh, too long of a decay on it because we don't we don't want this reverb echoing forever. We just want it to add a little bit of ambience to the guitar track. So here we go. I'm going to just play the acoustic track and I will bring in the reverb to show you how it mixes. Yeah. 
So there you go. A nice, nice acoustic guitar track. Try not to add too much reverb to this stuff when you're working with acoustic guitar. You should be worried about making that guitar sound great without reverb. So you only have to add a touch in later on to add maybe a bit of ambience. Guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to download your free Ultimate Home Studio Mix Guide. I made this for you guys so you could start getting your mixes sounding better. There's a lot of great information in there. And be sure to reach out if you have any questions or if you need any help with your mixes. Thanks.